Добрый день. Good afternoon, dear friends. I'm glad to see all of you here in this room, despite the fact that this is our final session, but still, so many people interested in this topic. My name is uh, Edward Galazinski, I'm rector of Tomsk University, and uh, I will moderate today's discussion, which will uh, be dedicated to uh, what and how to train the entrepreneurs. We'll introduce to you our entrepreneurs a bit later. The key idea behind this discussion is as follows. Today we are going to talk and the expert panel actually consists of the outstanding entrepreneurs, people who did um, a successful business, who with their own life show how with limited budgets you may combine different opportunities and do a big and important business. And um, this uh, actually topic is really very relevant for Russia. Let me make three bullet points, three messages to convey. We all know that in Russia, the share of uh, GDP or GNP related to entrepreneurship accounts only for 20 percent, whereas uh, in the developed countries, in the advanced countries such as the United States, Japan, China, it accounts for more than 50 percent. In that case, uh, the potential for growth of that uh, sector is enormous. At the same time, in the United States, uh, in the European Union, 62 out of 62 million jobs, half uh, of jobs uh, created by the entrepreneurs, so we cannot overestimate the importance of the sector, but at the same time, we have to bear in mind the specific conditions for the development of entrepreneurship in Russia. We'll not discuss it because it goes beyond our competence. The main idea behind uh, today's discussion, and present here are a lot of rectors, uh, representatives of different leading academia, labs, national uh, R&D institutes, we have to get an understanding for the system of education, how acting in the present conditions, we can do something for real. Because as you know, probably, Russia launched a national project which is called the Universities as Centers for Knowledge and Innovation. And um, it is implied that uh, 100 um, regions will get uh, the centers for innovative development and the universities will have to build some entrepreneurship uh, track, some entrepreneurship centers. A number of universities are doing that for quite a while and there are experts who have accumulated certain experience in that sense. Together we will launch a dialogue to help the system of higher education to determine its own position, its stance, to determine what steps forward to make, what we can do to our education, what we should not do, and what's uh, the place of the education in the whole ecosystem of training entrepreneurs. My second bullet point or my second message is about the evolution of uh, perception of uh, entrepreneurs. So what we understand by the word entrepreneurship or entrepreneur. Many of you know these things, and uh, some of um, you may have only some blurred um, understanding of what it is. The entrepreneurship is a notion developed from understanding that this is a risky business um, resulting in uh, getting profit uh, to uh, some combination of opportunities, but we have to understand entrepreneurship as a search for new opportunities uh, within the limited resources. Uh, resources are always in short supply. Those who may find new opportunities recombine the uh, resources and uh, create something new, assume some responsibility and risk your own property or your own life for that. This is a very broad definition of entrepreneurship, which I propose for you. This is the foundation for the economic growth. This is how the new types of enterprises are going to act. And uh, secondly, we are discussing social entrepreneurship. Uh, 
concept where the profit generation is replaced with uh, mission and servicing. And in the academic environment, we are discussing academic entrepreneurship. In essence, this is a science to business uh, concept, a rapid transfer of science into technologies and industries. We'll touch upon this topic too, but the context should be broader. And the last but not least, my message would be dedicated to the peculiarities of the professional activity of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs. Several words to say. We are discussing actually entrepreneurs as people who are free to use their means to act and the objectives, so they are free to take a decision. They assume responsibility for uh, the decision making and they run the risk. This is our context. Before we proceed with the discussion, just to warm you up, I would like to ask a question to all yours speakers, just to define the notion. Can you give three main characteristics which are crucial for entrepreneurs? So if we characterize the successful person, the entrepreneur, who we really need, so what would be these three features? One, two, three. Then we'll make a list of ten characteristics and we'll ask uh, people to vote and we'll get a consolidated rating. So, yes, please, Alexei. I like it when you make me do something I don't want to do. And uh, the quiz actually sets certain uh, frames. Um, now, people from universities are quite demanding. I would say that every happy family is... Um, happy the same way and uh, all the unhappy families are unhappy their own way and uh, all the entrepreneurs have their own reasons for success and for a failure. As far as you are provoking me, let me let me provoke you and trigger further discussion. Madness or craziness, uh, this is one of the traits. So an entrepreneur should be crazy, should be ready to do something unexpected, something unpremeditated, something which is unjustified uh, for everyone. And when we speak about any gut feeling that the decision is taken on the basis of some genetic code or some experience or any other reasons, in essence, I think that there is a simpler explanation to that. An entrepreneur, this is a person who should be capable of um, taking not simple decisions, but sometimes uh, they are capable of taking sudden decisions, unexpected decisions, and they have not only to take such decisions, but they have to convince themselves and others that really this decision has to be taken and that uh, this entrepreneur has to be followed. I do think that this is one of the most important features. So the second feature of an entrepreneur, this is tolerance uh, towards um, his or her own mistakes, but at the same time, this is also about the ability to make those mistakes on time or in the right time. But I'm speaking about um, real-life uh, entrepreneurship because um, in the conditions of a filibuster economy, uh, those who make mistakes um, on the wrong time, actually, they would be dead either as entrepreneurs or as um, physically as life creatures. And thirdly, an entrepreneur should have uh, an enormous uh, uh, intellectual Endurance. They have to be capable of processing big volumes of uh, data and find something very important in all those uh, streams of data. This is one of the key elements which may, attribute, may be attributed to by the educational system. So this is the president of uh, Delaware, Russia. And I'm passing the floor to Mr. Dimov. Push the button, please. It's very difficult to add something to what has been said by Alexei, in essence. He has mentioned a lot. Speaking about the qualities, which uh, I actually lived through and uh, which I like 
in entrepreneurs. We should say that every entrepreneur has his own tricks, um, has his or her own crazy things or some predetermination, but I don't think that I'm a very predetermined person. Although many people believe that I'm just crazy. I actually, it's very difficult to tell madness from determination, but still, person should be, should have some conviction, some self-confidence. Um, this is about the capability to stick to their own opinion under any conditions. And if a person changes his or her opinion, he still should be capable of driving other people, uh, somehow move people to, make, make people follow their ideas. If we look at uh, the government as the servicing, not the Machiavellian type of uh, activity, but uh, entrepreneurs, they really support life and living standards. And so the more entrepreneurs we have in the country, the ones which cooperate and collaborate and associate for the sake of the society, they bring a lot of benefits for the society because entrepreneurs, they support services or products which are beneficial or bring some benefits for the people. But dear colleagues, I suggest that in order to have some live discussion, so Vadim, uh, find some apologies, you see, some excuses, but it's okay, we're good. This is also actually a good feature that a person should have some survival instinct. Well, in what Western country people would believe that entrepreneurs are bad. Before actually we came to the rostrum, to the podium, uh, we discussed it. Well, actually we are for everything good and against everything bad, but my question is different. Looking at person, what you pay attention to, what you notice, or for instance you may say, I believe that he will become a good entrepreneur. Well, actually I pay attention to his values and to his resources. This is what uh, I appreciate. If I feel that at a distance, if I feel that this person uh, has self-confidence, then this person is my friend. This is like in the army, in sports, in the family. If you can trust this person, if you can rely on him, then you will go with him a distance. But if he's your competitor, if he's lying, then uh, do not know what to do with him. Okay, Alexander Utkin. Thank you so much, Alexei, for his tip about craziness and madness. I will further um, promote this topic. Speaking about madness, you know, craziness, uh, this is the ability of a person to drive people to um, somehow uh, inspire people, make them believe what you believe yourself. Not necessarily an entrepreneur. As uh, Vadim said, is a person who shares your values because uh, you, uh, this is only my team which has to share my values, but uh, this is attributable only to the values actually which are typical of this current stage of the business, but uh, actually human or life values actually, they are clearly very important, but uh, this is not about the teamwork, uh, this is about just good people. So this is the ability to uh, inspire people and uh, this is the ability uh, to take decisions and to make them come true. And the idea number one, the main criterion, the main feature of an entrepreneur, I think, this is the ability to dream, to dream and to be a visionary, to live through many years. Because... A good business, a good story is not visible at um, a distance of for several years. It is somewhere there. You have to dream about that and uh, make steps in forward. I will speak more about skills. I even made some uh, notes for me to follow and it will tell you about something which is probably not so important but something invisible what I run into, what qualities I trained in myself, and what skills I feel to get in the university. First, this is the ability to 
find not the idea which uh, is rejected by everyone, but underappreciated idea. So people sh should say that this is a product or this service is something you should never use, so they do not believe in only some individuals will believe you only there. You can create some added value and enter the market. And this is probably first in obvious thing. Second, this is a trend on hype, looking for hype. Business is always uh, an opportunity. And if you do not uh, go hand in hand with the trend uh, when you say that I stand up for something dramatic for something great, then you will lose a lot of opportunities. Even the most important, uh, the biggest enterprises, they still have to match the current agenda, the modern agenda. And thirdly, this is what you have to train in yourself. You have to do something probably of poor quality, but very fast. So this is li like at war. When you have to take a decision very quickly, the time which you spent on decision making actually contradicts the rightness of the decision. If you just uh, sit and calculate all the pros and cons, you will lose this opportunity. Well, there was a research who is the best soldier, and the best soldier is the one with the best, with a rapid, with the quickest re re reaction because they would survive at a war. Vyacheslav, good evening. I would tell you, first of all, I totally agree with Alexia that madness or craziness actually develops uh, the appetite for risk. Secondly, this is intuition when you have to feel rather than know. And the entrepreneur knows how to restart, to resume something, to start it again. And when you make an analysis of the market, for instance, so then uh, another Uber will emerge and you will lose an opportunity. So don't uh, spend too much time on that. And you, please. I don't know whether we can repeat something, but uh, a lot has been said already. It's obvious that uh, leadership uh, cannot be ruled out. If you want to build something big or something important, you would need a team. He, he would be doing something next to you and you have not a leader if you're not spearheading. If you not drive people, you have to engage people. You cannot make them do something, you can only engage them. Engage them into doing something which you propose. And uh, secondly, you have to feel people, feel partners, because uh, when you're an entrepreneur, you can always have some partners. You may feel what other people need. And this is a win-win strategy. Another important thing, this is the strategic mentality of thinking. Entrepreneur should be visionary. He should uh, uh, calculate several steps um, in advance. Um, he should know several years ahead uh, who he should uh, he, he is doing and what he is doing and with whom. And entrepreneur should be courageous and brave and uh, not be afraid of being risky. Go beyond any frames. And another notion is what I call a cubic mindset. A cubic mindset. This is what I would explain the following way. Any situation is a cube at least. So it has at least six sides. If you look at any situation straightforward, uh, it looks rectangular and there would be only uh, six or uh, four sides. But uh, if you look at it as a cube, then you will see that there are six answers to any situation, if you rotate it the right way. And finally, this is the flexibility. You have to take a decision and to be flexible to feel the trend and be ahead of the trend. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear colleagues. And really, we have uh, got to some understanding, to some common feeling who the modern entrepreneur is and what uh, features are typical of them. And let us make a round of more substantial uh, uh, contributions. Mr. Repnik, President of Delaware CEO Business Russia, please tell us about the broader context. How do you, how do you see uh, this concept? So it's great to look at myself from outside. Difference. After listening to our panelists, let me 
Just a number of my ideas. First of all, I would like to totally agree with the last speaker about empathy. Probably. This is number one. This is exactly why I would disagree with the total rationale of uh, actually the necessity to work with a team. This is part of empathy. Being empathetic. Who entrepreneur is? So, so let us get back to the very first slide we were shown. Um, in the conditions of the new economy, and the entrepreneur, this is not just uh, the owner of uh, newspapers and plants and factories, but often this is a person who, without ICO, bought a taxi and interacts with a consumer directly. But later on, it would be a person who would take advantage of some fundamental technologies, such as uh, total availability of data. Uh, the permission to use this uh, uh, data unrestrictedly and uh, the ability to draw any resources and a lot of entrepreneurs of future actually would be the ones without a team uh, so I do not rule it out that entrepreneurs will not uh, uh, actually can uh, do without a team Probably it would be some artificial intelligence somewhere in his pocket, and that's what would he would need. One of my favorite examples is when one of uh, uh, St. Petersburg Economic Forum was uh, set up. I came along with Mr. Shvalov and uh, the great uh, Finn who developed uh, Angry Birds. Uh, came there, he was asked uh, how to characterize him, and he said, I'm this and that, and I'm a powerful eagle. And so, actually, um, and uh, actually, uh, we called him a CEO founder, and he said, no, no, I'm not the founder. According to our articles of association, the company is run by the powerful eagle. So, and this eagle may fly alone, and uh, uh, actually, it may be followed by some eaglets. <laughs> um, and it means that uh, managing or running your own team is uh, secondary to this primary task that you have to fly. Empathy plays the role number one, because you always have to convince other people that what you are doing is the right thing, and you have to follow him. And for that, you need another skill. We have uh, one more common trait. We are all entrepreneurs, successful and uh, quite uh, well known. And actually, we know how to get in love with what we are doing. So this passion about what you are doing, I do not know any successful entrepreneur who would be just meticulously looking at uh, his business and saying, I would like to earn one, two, three billion dollars, and probably I will do this, this, and this. This is not entrepreneurship. Probably there are such examples there, too. But in my life experience, all the entrepreneurs, they're very passionate about what they're doing. They are crazy about the are deeply in love, passionately, unobjectively, in what they are doing. And when someone actually is offended uh, for an entrepreneur, this is the same thing as uh, someone is attacking his own family, his faith, his country. So this is um, the supreme value. Actually, so the business is equal to a family or to other values. Following this rationale, what do you think? This attitude towards uh, uh, common business, it can be brought up or this is uh, something which uh, uh, comes up spontaneously. I do think that this is a combination of factors. You can always uh, create an environment where it may be developed for instance, in my opinion, from the standpoint of uh, the system of education, uh, what matters is not uh, the professional skills and uh, not even competences, because 
you can acquire them if you need. And it is not even an ability to study. If you are smart enough, then you will learn something on your own. But I think that most importantly is to have uh, some environment when you act as a sponge, when you act as a table rasa, when you uh, digest everything you are fed with. And those clubs and associations are not... Um, uh, to lobby uh, the right th things about against uh, wrong things. This is not about spreading of the rules. These things are also important, but uh, we th we feel each other, we love each other, we are mindful of what we are doing. And in in the university, you may create, uh, you may train an entrepreneur. Once you create an environment in which uh, an entrepreneur may develop, but how you do that, this is up to you. But following this rationale, it is impossible to uh, create such an environment without having a partner who is already living following these rules. So creating an environment, this is a uh, joint work between uh, some business associations and universities. Probably that's it. And I do think that there are numerous there are numerous right answers to this question, but what I would suggest you to think after this session, let us have a look at where we get more entrepreneurs. We have so much information. Just following statistics, we can get a lot of answers, which seem to be very intuitive. Let us just look. Who and where uh, is most successful? Let's coordinate it with the markets, uh, with the regulation, and within some time, we will be able, I'm sure, to model an environment which will not, of course, uh, teach us uh, to make uh, entrepreneurs, but to facilitate uh, creation of a format which will not impede uh, uh, people from becoming entrepreneurs and will make uh, as uh, more efficient uh, and if uh, uh, not one but uh, four of uh, young uh, young sprouts uh, will prosper out of five that will be wonderful uh, thank you uh, we have spoken uh, today about a long-term game and I have a psychological background and I uh, know of a very interesting uh, experiment. Uh, Philippe Zibardou, a, ve a very good uh, psychologist, made a an experience on children. A child uh, of five or four years is uh, uh, given, is offered a sweet, and uh, he uh, and he said to the children, "If you don't eat, I will go for some time, and if you don't eat it." Uh, before I be, be come back, you will get two of them. And then there is uh, some uh, hidden camera uh, is uh, filming the children. And so we see that children hesitate. Uh, and even at that age, there are differences of behavior. Some people do, uh, some children cannot uh, stand up to the challenge and they eat the sweet and others manage uh, to have more patience. So what do you think? Is this paradigm of behavior um, important uh, for entrepreneurs' uh, behavior. Yes, of course, there are long-term and short-term businesses. But before I answer your questions, I would like to speak uh, on uh, the first, uh, on the very first subject. Uh, from the answers, you have understood that uh, everybody is different. And if you ask every entrepreneur in this room, you will see that uh, literally everybody is different. There is Everybody, every entrepreneur, entrepreneur has his or her own idea, his or her own uh, opinion. So there are different countries as well. In some countries, uh, the entrepreneurship atmosphere, atmosphere which helps, which facilitates people inspiring each other. Well, everybody needs inspiration everywhere. Another important aspect in this issue. Uh, in connection with this issue and uh, speaking of uh, long-term and even short-term prospect is the necessity of a person that I know has recently wrote uh, uh, in uh, uh, the Facebook. Uh, everyone, an entrepreneur and functionary, etc., 
needs uh, to under needs to feel that uh, other people need need him. And if you have a, a certain uh, a gadget uh, on um, on your lapel, uh, you might uh, believe that it's enough. But I do not believe that. I think that uh, everybody needs. Uh, to feel uh, that he or she is needed by others. Uh, this is a great factor of stability and this uh, necessity, fe this feeling of being necessary uh, influences the ability of a country to reproduce its resources. And uh, entrepreneurs are a very important resource. They create a lot of added value. They make money which can be invested to the economy, to universities, etc. But what can universities do uh, for, this, for the development of this um, resource, of this state? Uh, well, I'm not, uh, I do not want to speak about the state because, well, uh, we will uh, go into the wrong direction. Well, I have been to Tomsk, a city in Siberia, several times, pro rata. There are more students in Tomsk than anywhere in Russia. It is a good uh, region, it is a good city. Uh, they have, uh, their economy is not bad, uh, that, uh, but it's mostly raw materials based and I would not say that we have a, better, a very good situation with entrepreneurship in uh, Tomsk, although we have very bright young people there. Well, if we want to speak about limitations imposed by the state, we can do that, but I don't know where uh, it will land us. Uh, well, if you don't uh, allow people into the economy, you, do you want uh, to feel necessary to your country? Yes, or, or I'm sure. So the answer is very simple, yes. I, fin I graduated from Moscow State University. It, was, uh, it has been quite uh, recently, and I was uh, thinking, who are the graduates? So the, uh, this man has uh, gone uh, has become a student of uh, the history department of Moscow State University. I wanted to look at the history. I wanted to know a while, a while, how people lived before, while, of, of, while, for example, Vladivostok could become uh, a second Singapore, or why if, uh, Singapore uh, did become Singapore, uh, what uh, Stanford is doing. All these questions uh, today at the plenary meeting, we uh, were told that people who read uh, history books and uh, books on history and uh, uh, biographies become politicians, and those who read books on, economy, on the economy become entrepreneurs. Uh, what are you? What do you want uh, to become? Well, I, I think I have gone through the process already. I have been interested in politics. Uh, or I used to be interested in politics at some time. Well, I believe that uh, the universi universities as uh, uh, thought centers, as um, science centers uh, or scholarship centers are very, uh, will be very important in future. They will help us understand, they will help us uh, to find ways uh, to master knowledge and values. Do I understand you correctly that you mean to say that uh, you know, that it is important for universities uh, to provide such a broad education, perhaps not very specific, but it's important to instill certain values, uh, to widen horizons, and uh, you should knock people too much uh, so they wouldn't be uh, too... Oh, well, there is, an, uh, there is an approach, a different approach. They believe that it's necessary to knock uh, the children. For example, Mr. Nechaev has this idea. Yes, uh, at a certain point, you should, uh, should stop knock people. He says that uh, we, uh, he believes that you should take the, uh, the most difficult people, the deviant people, knock them, and they can uh, change and become entrepreneurs. Or, for example, Kiel's idea, he, be, he says... Uh, uh, he takes such, uh, such uh, young people, gives, uh, give money to them, go away from the university, set up a business, uh, and when you, uh, be, you uh, have made your business, then you can come back and then you will need, uh, you feel the need for knowledge. So there's a different uh, idea. So in this uh, idea, in, in such a world, uh, universities have nothing to do. 
so uh, you 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 just send away well it's very different nothing should be identified you should give knowledge you should uh, create a certain atmosphere certain values uh, uh, which are inherent in education and nothing special should be done uh, a very good comfortable atmosphere for uh, education should be created you cannot uh, make uh, entrepreneurs in universities uh, you have to uh, you have to help people to provide their knowledge, and you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't uh, control them too much. Saying sit down here, learn this and that. I think, I think, and before we give the floor to Alexander Evgeny, you said you wanted us uh, to vote. Uh, your colleagues, what are the ten characteristics? Uh, uh, we wanted uh, the rule, the audience uh, to vote on them. No. Well, when you find them, when you have found them, uh, then we'll start voting. And now I would like to give the floor to Alexander Vitalievich Utkin, Director General of the, comp of the Hutton Way co Company. He is a self-made man uh, who has a very well-developed life philosophy. You shape the market. Uh, I do you think uh, that uh, the, such things can be taught, uh, or, or the, uh, should this be totally intuitive and uh, such people should be identified and uh, uh, promoted? Well, it's easy to speak uh, after intelligent people, intelligent speakers, uh, because uh, practically I have all the main points have already been made, naturally. I can start, well, I can start from the end. You can't uh, teach this. It's my opinion. My opinion is also that entrepreneurs are born. And uh, only, only then they can become ones. And uh, what should be done, what should universities do? They should make uh, complex people. A person... What is a complex person? It is a person with critical thinking, a person who has doubts. It is a person who is educated in the broad meaning of the world, who knows history, philosophy, maths, physics, natural sciences. He must know how the universe is structured, how society is structured. What this person will become, an entrepreneur or a, a functionary, does not matter. What matters is that uh, uh, the critical mass of complex people will create such an environment of which uh, the facilitator prohibit, uh, prohibited us uh, to, from talking. It will create uh, exactly the environment in which an entrepreneur will be comfortable and will uh, uh, feel necessary for other people and of which Vadim has said, has spoken. Nowadays, an entrepreneur is a deformed personality from the point of view of social evolution or a socially deformed person because like in uh, any evolutionary environment, uh, the priority for an individual is to survive. That is to have uh, the, those characteristics which make uh, him or her fit for the environment. Uh, and entrepreneurs are like gladiators who are going who are going to die. So that's uh, all from me. So uh, uh, on this optimistic note I would like to finish. Well, mm, yes, uh, the environment is rather aggressive. The, the paradigm of uh, richness is uh, is stolen riches, and it must be. We should live. Uh, we should live uh, for some time so that people uh, could become rich without stealing. And we need time uh, for people to understand that uh, private property is sacred. And the point is that business is not important. The takings that you uh, can spend on yourself and not on investment uh, appear in about 10 years at least. 
Well, or the most at the most shortest in five years. So, uh, an entrepreneur should not be a deformed person, but a complex person who can who is able uh, to plan uh, for five, ten, twenty years. And if universities can produce such uh, complex people, and uh, who will know their purpose, well, this is a multi generational process. It may be difficult. Uh, it can be uh, longer than the lifetime of uh, a teacher who produces such uh, people. So a teacher in this case uh, uh, works for his children and grandchildren. But if we look at our capitalist uh, reality, which is 26 years old, uh, well, uh, at the big in the 1990s, uh, Entrepreneurs were often killed, shot and killed. Nowadays, uh, there are criminal cases instituted against them, and sometimes they're put behind bars. Well, this is evident progress, and I'm not being uh, being uh, sarcastic. So, uh, uh, there is a summer campus in Kazan where people come, uh, together, they are not made uh, entrepreneurs there. Uh, it, uh, they do not. Uh, people do not say, "Well, uh, let's take those uh, people into into uh, into uh, entrepreneurs." No, of course not. It's uh, so these processes take a long time, but we should not be afraid of doing this. And the programs which uh, exist now, we will make uh, entrepreneurs, is just uh, a, a marketing ruse. Uh, this is uh, something uh, which people unfortunately believe and uh, invest money in it and make careers on that, but that's not very good. Thank you for your opinion. And now we approach a certain logic who, uh, According to which it, it is uh, that some sort of heroes uh, advance uh, the entrepreneurship economy, but only one uh, man in a thousand are such heroes. So 999 have been killed or put behind bars or, or recycled, uh, and only one hero has survived. But now, in our situation, we should uh, reach. Uh, such a state of things when not just one but at least five uh, uh, people from a thousand uh, uh, could reach it. What can we change in our education, in universities, in value setting, in, other pa in our education pattern so that uh, there would be a bit more such people, although our research shows uh, that, uh, that uh, about five percent in the population a fair 5% of the population are capable of uh, doing this, and uh, there is a point of view according to which uh, this is uh, an inborn ability, that uh, we, uh, these are people with uh, very quick reactions, uh, who, people who love risk, and we must create uh, for them good uh, conditions for them, or, and now I'm uh, addressing Rostislav Vladimirovich, uh, or nowadays another point of view has appeared that heroes might be uh, might be uh, replaced by mass produced persons uh, you, that you can produce them uh, on an industrial scale Rostislav what's your opinion on this well here I think uh, that the majority of uh, those who have spoken here have uh, uh, avoid uh, the point of view that entrepreneurs are born and we must uh, f identify such born entrepreneurs and develop their potential and uh, that there will be great heroes and no te te mass technology can uh, reproduce them. However, an entrepreneur must uh, surround himself with uh, persons who uh, think uh, more technically and in a more organized way so that they could help uh, to uh, him to achieve his dream. But they will not uh, make a dream. And in uh, among entrepreneurs, 
I see two types. One type is, uh, uh, as you have said, a hero, a hero entrepreneur, and the second uh, uh, type is uh, the mass-produced uh, entrepreneur. So the hero entrepreneur is a man who can feel the needs of the population, of the market, of the country, of an industry before uh, the before uh, the relevant society understands it. Uh, uh, and the examples are Facebook, Uber, Bitcoin, etc. And there are business entrepreneurs who find a niche, an empty niche for a service or for goods, a certain type of goods, and they find a way to bring the service of the goods to this uh, empty space. And I think uh, that all uh, entrepreneurs have, uh, have something of both of these extremes. Uh, so both uh, types uh, and those who are mixed type entrepreneurs, and especially those who are closer uh, to the right, those who feel the need of a certain service, of certain goods, uh, uh, are born, and what we uh, can do in universities is to help them to develop their potential and to perhaps to lower <laughs> the barriers uh, uh, for starting business uh, by making it easier to open a company, uh, to uh, get uh, financial information, uh, to uh, to know certain uh, uh, certain uh, market terminology etc all of uh, this uh, helps uh, us uh, uh, all all that sort of thing will help uh, this uh, 0.5 or 5 percent of the population who are potential entrepreneurs to become real entrepreneurs. And now I would like to ask Alexey Vasilyevich Vasilchuk uh, to join our discussion. He has uh, built uh, a well-developed network in the uh, restaurant uh, sector. Well, speaking of uh, heroes and mass technologies. Uh, Restaurants are very much connected with uh, standards. In, in our cultures, it is, uh, it is uh, difficult to instill. In our restaurant, uh, restaurants, you, want, you, you come to a restaurant, you, uh, you, you taste a dish, and uh, when you come back in 10 years, you want uh, the same uh, taste. And when uh, people creatively change dishes, uh, Standards are ch changing, and in this field, is everything based on heroes or on mass technology? Well, uh, these two things uh, do not replace each other. Uh, this is different experience. We have uh, been we have worked for a long time in this field. Uh, at first, we had the illusion. When I got my business education, I thought that I would uh, write and structure standards, and everything will be very good and very stable. I, I, I did everything according to the books, uh, like I was taught uh, in the business schools. Uh, well, it was uh, introduced uh, and it did work, but uh, the soul was lost, if you see what I mean. The atmosphere, you know, you do things for people, so you need a balance. Uh, of course, uh, things must be structured, uh, Oh, there must be uh, uh, standards. Uh, all this is necessary, but you should not believe that this is the only solution uh, to be stable. You need to give people uh, some space for creativity, uh, to, uh, to set the limits within uh, which uh, they could be human, uh, could uh, show some independence as uh, for... Education. We are talking. We have been talking a lot about entrepreneurship. Yes, of course, uh, you you need to be born with the necessary uh, abilities or potential. But uh, I believe that for an on, what is important for an entrepreneur 
uh, alongside other things, so those uh, that have been mentioned here, uh, you need some very some uh, value fundamental qualities because uh, an entrepreneur works with people, his partners, uh, his employees, his customers. And so if he has some fundamental values, which are the right uh, values, which are human values, uh, this is felt because everything in our world is made in uh, on the basis of feelings, of course, in the 21st century, there's a lot of uh, uh, scientific progress uh, or artificial intelligence, but I do not believe that this can che- replace uh, uh, things which uh, we find inside us, which uh, comes from God. And another important thing which is necessary for an entrepreneur, which is necessary for young people, besides fundamental knowledge, fundamental science, of course, uh, how mathematics uh, uh, makes a trained mind uh, with a good uh, structure, it helps it. But besides uh, values and fundamental science, it is important to uh, teach people to identify in others in, their, in, in the people who are the environment, uh, which are their strong points. Uh, we do not, it is not necessary to make uh, people universal, because in, uh, in school uh, people are taught everything. But uh, one child comes, for example, to his father and says, Dad, I don't want to learn chemistry. I don't need it. Uh, and somebody might say, you, you must have excellent marks in all subjects. But uh, I would uh, say, no, if you don't need it, if you, don't, if you like, for example, mathematics, then learn mathematics. Strong uh, uh, points must be, must be identified and used, and their weak points must be covered by uh, other people who have, uh, uh, who, whose strong points are the other's weak points. So it is very important to teach people like this, and we should start with the teachers so that they would not see people as standard standard, uh, people, uh, but uh, uh, individualities which can be developed in a way useful for the country and for others. Uh, I have received a note uh, uh, which uh, uh, says uh, that we should make the general conclusion of our discussion, but I am against this. I believe that the idea of our expert panel is to understand the positions of those people who are, in fact, examples uh, of best entrepreneurial practices. So the question is, what should be taught? Uh, and to see people who have gone, who have uh, re- achieved certain success in this field. It's not an abstract uh, discussion, as I believe. And in connection with this, I would like to ask to show on the screen those uh, uh, points so that we have made uh, on the results of the first round. Uh, and I believe that you... Our colleagues have your own uh, point. Uh, will somebody un- un- explain how you how can uh, this uh, how can this uh, be voted for? So you can cho- choose only one point. You can vote by pressing on the relevant uh, figure, and then we will see the results and the opinion of uh, uh, the audience on this. And while the audience is um, voting, I would like to invite uh, the rectors of universities who are here uh, to, jo- to join the discussion. I, of course, Marat, I will invite you, but there are also uh, rectors and colleagues from very important universities. And I would like to ask you, uh, what, are your, uh, what are your opinions on what should be taught and how it should be taught? Is anyone ready? Is anyone ready to take up the microphone and to join the discussion? Please don't be shy. Uh, please take the microphone and uh, tell, introduce yourselves. Uh, the voting is going on. Uh, don't. Uh, 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 yes, uh, well, it's difficult. Uh, well, uh, Taliati State University, Mikhail Krzysztof, rector. Of course, uh, 
entrepreneurship as a personal quality is a talent, a, a talent, and I totally agree that people are born with it. But this should not be heroism. So, uh, these uh, things must not be uh, coupled together. An on entrepreneur is born, and uh, therefore he is a hero. An uh, a born entrepreneur must grow, and the environment must be such as uh, would not prevent him from growing. He must be given tools, uh, and uh, he must be taught to use them. You can uh, teach anyone to play the piano although he would not become a pianist. And when we give the tools for entrepreneurship, we do not guarantee that anyone and everyone can become an entrepreneur. Uh, but uh, we must uh, teach people to use them. Nowadays, uh, uh, the system of education is one of the first of barriers to overcome. And it's also heroism, overcoming the education Situation which is classical. If we change it, uh, uh, here is perhaps uh, we will not need heroism. And I understand very well that all uh, entrepreneurs are here on the stage uh, say that entrepreneurship is heroism because they did uh, swim against, against the current. Uh, I'm sure that you are all talented, that you have entrepreneurship uh, talented talents. Uh, but if you had had a situation in which uh, you did not need to swim against the, current, uh, the current, in which you would have been facilitated by your environment, uh, uh, thank you. Well, heroism is a part of our social cultural situation. I once uh, brought a, a group of uh, school directors uh, to Finland uh, uh, with and uh, 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 when I was uh, for a week with them, I saw how, how they are deformed by the system. They are all authoritarian. They are all very strong. They are all very hard. I think uh, uh, that was a part of uh, uh, one of the so, uh, historical stage of development of our society. It is not just... Uh, typical of entrepreneurship, but it's like leadership. 100 years of discussion of leadership have shown that there are no universal, uh, universal factors of leadership. The latest meta-analysis uh, papers show that it, is, uh, it doesn't matter what uh, type of nervous system you have or anything. Uh, leadership is a role and you can learn it. You can, it can be developed professionally. But still, actually, uh, what matters is uh, how far the bar is set. If we set the bar so high that out of five sprouts only one may survive, then why are we doing that? We can artificially create certain conditions when only a hero may become an entrepreneur, and the hero which uh, should be extremely brave, extremely courageous. Uh, we don't have to do that, because an entrepreneur is usually a leader, and leadership implies some heroism, but uh, it should not go to the extremity. At the moment, this is very extreme. This is not pure entrepreneurship. And you understand that, that uh, for instance, sitting actually in the same line, you are just an entrepreneur like me, like any other director. Heroism is a very delicate thing. It may be quite tricky. Assuming responsibility as heroism and uh, uh, rectors as human responsibilities, ministers and entrepreneurs, they both uh, assume responsibility. Anyone may assume responsibility, but some people may not uh, assume any responsibility. That's what heroism is about. Think that uh, entrepreneurs are born. You have to be born an entrepreneur. But uh, my question goes to the colleagues. So will you manage to do something else? I have no doubt that... Uh, I would uh, develop not only as an interpreter, just probably I became an interpreter because um, this is how the uh, life uh, made it. Uh, so a person is always in the fork in the road, and he chooses between uh, something which is right and nothing which is right. And probably Edward uh, would make actually a better interpreter than I do. And probably I could make a good director just uh, this is the choice which we make at a certain stage of our life. Uh, you are not born an entrepreneur, but you are born a creative person who is 
take a certain responsibility. So I'm passing the mark to another rector, Boris Kasilsky from Ulyanovsk University. Heroism is a good thing. But actually, this is a very poor country where entrepreneurs are seen as heroes. Uh, Edward uh, always tries to push us to a different track. But what we, the rectors, have to do? What we have to do? And entrepreneurs actually, they are discussing other things. So let me discuss that with Edward. We are competing for a competition. So we let Edward develop it. And to lawyers, always say we are going to train the poor lawyers so that we don't have any competitors. Colleagues, we have the common problem. There's a set of people with certain set of talents or skills. So who will become entrepreneurs? What do we do with them? And this is the problem which was solved in our universities. We are training scientists and researchers for many years, and they're good ones. We create a social media and necessary environment for them. There are good scientists, there are top scientists. Unfortunately, some of them leave the country, but uh, we know how to train them, how to bring them up. So the problem is the same, is similar to that. My professor actually trained me to be the rector, and uh, one of you has to actually train on entrepreneurs. So the template is uh, very obvious. I do think that it's very important that we develop some personal qualities in our students, not skills, not something that you have to know how to do this and that, be good at mathematics, but uh, individual qualities, some personal qualities have to be trained. Uh, the ability to assume responsibility to take care of other people. I do think that this is something we overlook in the modern world. In my opinion, this is clearly very important. For instance, uh, my company is quite big, more than 6,000 people. And when we hire an employee, we, first of all, pay attention to their personal qualities. How a person would react in this on that uh, occasion, whether he can um, somehow inspire people, drive them, Skills could be trained, uh, but uh, values, this is something which have to be there. And uh, personal qualities, uh, this is something the young people are lacking. Everyone is uh, just crazy about skills. But this sounds very philosophical, but uh, my university taught me two things. So uh, there are windows of opportunity, and we have to be ready to risk and take some uh, sudden, unexpected decisions when we actually understand that uh, we can reset something. This is when we study in the university and afterwards. But after that, you marry, you have children or a dog, and you feel some internal responsibility. You cannot change anything. You can't reset your whole life. After the age of 40, 45, uh, um, some of my friends would say that I actually uh, achieved something in my life, and now... I will do something different, something strange, and uh, actually this appetite for risk uh, would uh, be supported by certain life experience, and they may do great things. So what my university taught me to do, every credit, every exam is a challenge. How do I, spending as little time as possible or spending as little resources as possible, not fail the exam? Every topic is about optimizing the flow of data or how do I make the professor like me? So I don't want your subject, for instance, but uh, please like me because I'm a good student. These are absolute skills of adaptive work in a new media or new environment to which you don't understand. In the university, you always see new people, new subjects. You used to have your father, your mother, and your favorite book, and uh, you could come to terms with the three of them. But uh, here in the university, everything is different, and university actually may teach us a lot, train a lot of skills, but don't go to the extremities. And, to, for instance, 
uh, such an environment in the university should be perceived as an opportunity, but um, leave the students be students. Uh, uh, I don't care about them. So this is good that this is a very stressful environment because stress teaches us how to mobilize our resources. You know, told us that Russian our cultural code is about what? It is about the fact that when facing a trouble, facing a disaster, we can mobilize our internal resources and we can do something which no one expects us to do. For instance, the World War II Great Patriotic War. It made us do something, face the challenges uh, in such a short period of time, so intensive way. Uh, actually, we can mobilize our resources to address the problem, and university teaches us how to mobilize our resources and resources to address the problem. So, let us give the mark to the floor. I have an interesting thing to add to what you are discussing. When I was young, I started with a different system, I actually. I was brought up by a military system. I took a military path, a military uh, track, so I uh, left uh, Suvorov um, Military College, then I entered uh, Military Institute, and I saw myself as an officer. And I um, like very much the general headquarters or general staff, and they trained certain skills, certain view of life and relations, how to treat people, how to treat friends, how to treat uh, yourself, and uh, still this influences me. I became an entrepreneur just by accident, just uh, having to make a choice. I was not going to become an uh, entrepreneur, but I made uh, this choice at a time, and I make this choice every now and then, so I entered the history uh, department, uh, to study history, but this is my choice. I was uh, taught by real genius from among the professors in the Moscow State University, and there are a lot of some contradictory things. I gave my own opinion, and uh, some students, my fellow students, would say that, uh, oh, you're crazy, you cannot actually tell them, you cannot uh, actually um, somehow say that they are wrong. Uh, because they are real gurus, they are real uh, top brass um, in their science, and uh, just a couple of uh, weeks later, they would tell me the same thing which I thought, so which is most appropriate, and uh, at the historical faculty, actually, history faculty, uh, professors are changing, they are rotating, and we have to give some classical knowledge, some classical foundation. In business universities or business schools, you have to give some essence, uh, some classical business knowledge and uh, chemistry or physics. Uh, let the student um, determine what is most interesting for them. Thank you so much. And I would like to note one very important idea, which is clearly topical for uh, the system of education. We speak about the right to make a mistake. Uh, the modern education. Actually, this is about credit or failure or failed exam, and that's it. But we forget about the mistake and the right to make a mistake and to learn from the mistake. So this is what I would note at the margins, on the margins. Svetlana Panarina, an architect and an apprentice, I have my own studio. I have one comment about the responsibility of people. Um, actually, I regret hearing that entrepreneurship is a heroism, act of heroism. I wish our society doesn't see the ability to assume the responsibility not as act of heroism, as not as a noble deed. I totally agree with you. I do think that everyone would agree with me, so... We all are doing noble deeds in our life, uh, but entrepreneurship, this is a very good quality. Just a hero, probably. This is a person who does uh, some extraordinary things, and I totally agree with you. Responsibility should not be something extraordinary. It should be normal. It should be mundane. But uh, you have to assume responsibility not only for yourself, but uh, for others, and it would require some inner bravery, inner 
Короче, you have to be accountable to your own consciousness. And you have to assume responsibility not only for you, but for other people too. And this is not easy for me. Anytime I set up my company about 17 or 16 years ago, my first partner emerged when the company was valued, uh, uh, was estimated two billion dollars, and uh, even then, when Mitsui joined me, actually, I thought that what would I do if I fail, um, because I felt some responsibility. Uh, in front of him, so and I thought that probably if I may assume responsibility for my employees, uh, responsibility for the consumers, uh, then probably I can be responsible for uh, the investor too. So this is about irresponsibility and bravery at the same time. But in order to become an entrepreneur, you have to assume responsibility for yourself, for your own deeds. This is what most of people in Russia do not know to do. This is a quality not of a hero, but of a normal person. I am a psychologist, professional psychologist, and I do some coaching too. And in essence, my question was different, but let me add something to what you have said. So, heroism. This is the ability to overcome uh, the resistance of the system, but we understand what it is about. The cultural peculiarity of um, Russia is in the fact that we have some paternalist uh, mentality and um, assuming responsibility is not uh, promoted by the state or by our history. 75 or 80% of the population have this paternalist um, um, mindset. Um, they believe that uh, actually a czar would uh, come up and uh, solve the problem. Uh, for instance, you remember our fairy tales when uh, the main protagonist would be sitting on a furnace and wait until something is done for him. So our behavior is not brought up even by the fairy tales. And uh, hence I have my following question. Uh, one of the directors said that we know how to train scientists, uh, how to set up uh, this uh, scientific environment. But um, I turn to you, the entrepreneurs. Can a specialist train an entrepreneur, a person who never was involved in any entrepreneurship, if he tries to bring up an entrepreneur? What do you think? Will he succeed in that or not? I don't think that uh, this is very much possible. And the main business guru are uh, the main icons. They have never been entrepreneurs, but they brought up a lot of people. And my research says that the best teachers, the best professors, may create a sophisticated person, but they themselves they remain on the other side of uh, this uh, equation. They bring knowledge. They assume responsibility for... You speak about gurus in what sphere? Some spiritual sciences. To be a guru in uh, spiritual sciences or areas, this is one thing, but uh, taking an idea and um, make it come true, this is something different. What we're doing spiritual, what we're doing practically, these are things different. So thank you so much, dear colleagues. Uh, we have two rectors here in this room who have a very serious experience of doing that. So how to make certain ideas come true. This is about the technology. So I'm turning to Marat Atnasha from Skokova. Uh, to tell us how you implement this concept of training entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. Just let me take a focal place. And uh, actually, I've never planned to be a rector. I uh, was appointed rector six months ago. We, a business school, actually doing business. Uh, Skolkova Business School, actually, this is a mid sized enterprise. This is how we originally were designed for doing business and uh, at different meetings, uh, 
we all know EBITDA, we all know marketing, and we may actually discuss uh, wrong or right value proposition. And uh, actually, the business school was coined like that. We want to do business, but we actually a replica of what the country's economy look like. So our um, scientific programs account for about 10 to 15 program, uh, 10 or 15 percent of our revenue, and we are a business school, and so this looks very much like the Russia's national economy. On the one hand, we are a business, and our classical professors in the school called business school, this is uh, something strange. We do not use this term, even the words would be different. So why this is only 10 or 15 percent, not 50 percent? Let me get back to the restraints. Uh, I do think that there are some value-based restraints, really values uh, of entrepreneurship on non-existent the country. So these entrepreneurs who we see on the podium, they are all nice, good-looking white males. And we can even make a research and say that 80% uh, success chances are about having moustache or a beard. And it would actually prove that uh, in order to become uh, successful, you have to grow either mustache or bird. Uh, actually, uh, at the time, at the time, it has become uh, uh, quite pivotal. A lot of pivot, uh, a lot of academic research uh, do about the same. Uh, so they use uh, scientific uh, tools in order to prove things which don't make sense at all. But what business school in the world is about? So I attended a number of business schools in the world. So business school is uh, it gives uh, some footprint of the values to those who was not born to the country with certain values. And, for instance, a person would now understand that, uh, for instance, I'm doing the right thing, I'm creating the value. Well, uh, value, this is the same, actually, word in English, but in Russia, these are two things different, value and values, so spiritual values and material values, when we speak about some spiritual bonds or when we speak about gold. And uh, business schools are working with values, and I'm sure that our teachers, our faculty, our academia, this is uh, also part of Russia, who are not treating entrepreneurs well, because entrepreneurs, they are stealing some things from somewhere, or from someone. Are you greedy? Are you greedy enough? Actual value. Uh, spiritual value and material value, these are things actually we have to define more clearly. We have to train in universities. Uh, so people in Russia do not like money, but they like the result. Um, being a very successful professor, you may earn very good money. We teach richness. If we want entrepreneurs, entrepreneur, we have to teach entrepreneurship in the broad sense of that. So there is a topic, there is a shortage of uh, trust and confidence. And what uh, business school may create, it may create uh, confidence different ways. So friendship ties, uh, some specific uh, social capital, a very important topic which we should not be forgetful of. This is what may trigger more entrepreneurship, and there are things which we cannot influence, or at least we thought that uh, we would avoid it, um, such as protecting interests, etc., etc. So there is a lot of monopolism uh, in the Russian economy. So the economy is becoming more and more monopolist. But you know that entrepreneurs uh, grow much faster in case of monopolies. All the startups uh, shown by Edward. This is about would-be new monopolists. When you invent something, then you have to protect it and uh, enjoy it. This is about the evolution. This is about the progress. This is what textbook on strategy will tell us about. 
Alexei, but still, I don't think that the mature monopolies would allow anyone else to emerge. Well, if anyone brings up something newer and better, then you will immediately become obsolete. But I say, I keep saying this is the topic which should not be brought up by the business schools, because this is what the state would do. Let me say a couple of words what we are doing in Skolkova, what we managed to do and what we failed to do. First of all, the medium, the environment, so this is what we discussed with Edward and with uh, Vladislav. We are creating the environment. This is all what we are doing, uh, creating a certain environment where people would feel differently, would live differently, including entrepreneurs and students, people who would attend our courses, and this is the most difficult part. Because changing the environment of uh, the university, which has certain cultural heritage and history, is extremely difficult. And uh, we have celebrated 10th uh, anniversary, and it is uh, very difficult even for us to change something, let alone the universities with more than 100 years um, uh, history. We have discussed with a colleague of mine the, actually the most important features. Uh, entrepreneurs are people who are more vivid, more lively. They can decide on their own what they do today. And this concept of entrepreneurship may be expanded. You may become a mayor, you may become a rector of a university. When you decide what you do today, when you do that on your own, well, along with Ranepa, we bring together about 300 cities. And at the same time, we find ourselves in a blind alley. But some of these cities, uh, actually, after analyzing the situation, will say that uh, I can do something. And, uh, for instance, the same is true of the universities, uh, which uh, start from the same foundation and some universities may take off the ground and others would just die. Our business school, Skolkova, actually has a quite lively environment. There are a lot of debates and discussions there. And, for instance, a program director would say, I have to change this IT director. Our brand is not good, so the marketing doesn't work. So this is not a typical uh, discussion f- even for a big corporation. A few words about knowledge. We are not ruling out the knowledge because knowledge is clearly very important. And this is about soft skills. Uh, but this is the structure which we perceive as... Uh, an analogy that uh, actually uh, actually getting knowledge from a good university is like taking water from a sprinkler. If uh, actually uh, there is such a water stream, you may get knowledge from here, here, and from that source too. So you have access to knowledge, but this is up to you whether you take this uh, data or not. We do not believe that you can teach entrepreneurship, and we're not speaking about MA students or BA students. We are speaking about people actually aged uh, 40. If um, we take the average age of a startupper, if we rule out uh, Silicon Valley, then these are people aged 40. So we can with the people aged 35, 40. People whose main question is uh, how to develop further and how to transform. Uh, Evolution, this is a linear process, but transformation is different. So, for instance, a person would say, actually, I have set up my own flowers shop. I have set up a chain of 150. What's my next step? What's my next level? We have actually... Uh, set up a program for would-be or for future exporters. So there is no market, there is no product, but you have to develop uh, future exporters. So we have developed a program and it really works. And next level would be not about the skills, but this is about mindset, about thinking. People who would um, believe that they can do something at a more uh, difficult level This is about transformation, and still 
we account for 15% of that. Uh, as for the rest, that would be about Gazprom, uh, public sector, etc. Uh, Skull Co Business School was set up when we believed that uh, entrepreneurship would uh, take a bigger share in the economy. Well, 15%, that's good. This is better than 10%, but I would even draw an example when we started uh, these, uh, uh, studying this topic. We believe that only 3 to 5% uh, are capable of self implementation, implementing themselves. Now we see that about 15% of people may actually implement their skills. I would ask uh, Michael to join our discussion. That's a person who is quite young, who has not reached the age of uh, uh, Silicon Valley startup, uh, who is the founder of a successful. Uh, digital or high-tech business. Do you think that uh, what we have discussed is attributable to high-tech uh, where you have other, other realities? First of all, I would like to uh, somehow dissipate this illusion about uh, entrepreneurship and the startup. Some people believe that uh, you have to be born a startup or be born an entrepreneur. My, I'm 30 years old, actually. I graduated from Baumanski uh, Technology Institute. Two times I tried to be a postgraduate, so when actually I... Um, celebrated my 30th year anniversary, I was um, elected the entrepreneur of the year. I'm not a superstar, but the right answer was already given. Uh, so everything depends on the environment. And in the Silicon Valley, for instance, outstanding mm -hmm. scientists may say that uh, you have to be born an outstanding scientist. So I believe that uh, what matters is uh, the environment, just like in music, like in jewelry, jewelry even, it's important to get into the right environment and then you'll get a chance uh, to show what you are made of. As uh, for the role of the universities, well, I think I am among those present here. I was uh, the last uh, to graduate from a university. I, is in tw I, um, I graduated uh, in 2010, I uh, have an engineering education, higher education, so I'm not going to philosophize. Uh, I won't speak about personal individual qualities, empath empathy, or what should be changed uh, in the field of uh, social culture or mentality. I can tell you what, uh, what I... Uh, did not get uh, during my own education and what can what are the results were results measurable results first of all any chair in any university in any real university must uh, cooperate with real business if um, there's no such uh, uh, real cooperation uh, then the question arises why uh, it uh, it uh, exists uh, I saw this in many in the universities I have graduated from, so we need uh, real business trainers, practitioners. Uh, and now we see that in some universities people try to learn entrepreneurship, but their teachers uh, limit themselves uh, to saying uh, uh, what's written in the books. Uh, why should we have this? Uh, why should we waste our time? We can read the book, we can... Uh, have an online uh, course, uh, why should, I think it's a waste of time to go and uh, uh, listen to the lecturer. Uh, in Moscow and other huge cities, uh, you, you uh, spend so much time on traveling to your university. So, so don't you need to see, to look into the eyes of a person in order to believe him? to feel that this word is very important, or are you so sure of yourself that you, uh, of, uh, that you can put uh, the right <coughs> accent yourself? For me, it is necessary. When I started uh, to play poker, and I played it uh, not so badly, I um, 
played it at the European or world level, but whenever I played with the computer, I couldn't uh, play it. When I saw the eyes of uh, uh, my partner, I can play. When I don't, I cannot see it. And my professor, my, my teacher, I'm sure has written lots of books, uh, but uh, his books do not work. Uh, you need to listen to him, even if there are lots of guys uh, uh, sitting. And uh, if, uh, for example, Steve Jobs, uh, the late uh, Steve Jobs was here, uh, we would, uh, uh, we would uh, applaud him. Well, Alexei, you see the difference of uh, generations, of, uh, between the generations. Uh, I'm young. Well, here we have all the generations of entrepreneurs here. It's wonderful. Yes, of course, uh, there are some uh, inspiring lecturers, but my best lecturers, one was uh, physics lecturer and the second was quantum, lec quantum lecturer, uh, physics lecturer. Uh, but do you know why it was interesting to attend their lectures and uh, then after that read the books at home? Because they were not following the official curriculum. They were uh, speaking of things which you cannot find in a book. And as for the curriculum, you can uh, read the book and uh, that worked 100%. Uh, and uh, uh, so this model I'm trying to use uh, as few American uh, words uh, as possible, but still I have to use the word blended learning. When you have uh, fewer lectures and more practice. And in Russia, I think uh, are we, uh, what we lack in Russia, I think uh, these are projects, not some projects that you make in a haste in order to pass a, a test or whatever. But when for uh, several months, uh, for half a year, uh, you work on a specific project. And we do not have this. Uh, and when after university, uh, when you graduate, you are not ready for that. And uh, I can speak uh, subject by subject. There are very few universities. I wouldn't say there are no such uh, universities. No, very few universities in Russia teach good English. Uh, and after such university, you are cut off from the international uh, environment, and it's very difficult for you when you try to build uh, IT uh, business. Well, you are too old, because the next language is Chinese. Uh, well, Mikhail is uh, right uh, between... Uh, you know, I uh, was uh, taught by excellent teachers, uh, not from the books, and my children are being taught uh, 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 excellent English, and I think you got in the gap when there was neither this nor that. Well, I see, uh, colleagues, we are different generations of entrepreneurs, and I would like to uh, invite uh, Alexei Vasilchuk to take part in the discussion. He needs to go already. But I think he wishes to say a few words. Well, I would like to sum up my thoughts. I believe entrepreneurship is, first of all, a personal quality, because a, an entre entrepreneur is someone who can do anything, and not necessarily just business. He can be a good uh, uh, company leader, uh, he can be a good functionary, a good uh, scholar or scientist. Uh, it is a very good personal quality to be a good entrepreneur. And I think a very big uh, objective, uh, a very big priority for our education is uh, to uh, is to help people to develop this uh, ability, and it is very important uh, to cooper uh, the cooperation between education and business is very important, uh, and not just with uh, business, but with institutions who are uh, who produce not uh, just uh, education programs but uh, ready uh, products. Of course, theory is very important. But when you support it by practical knowledge, uh, when, you are st when you are a student of a university, it is very important. And uh, inviting people who are self-made uh, allow uh, to break the stereotype. Uh, people are nowadays often afraid of becoming an entrepreneur. 
Oh, becoming entrepreneurs. Young people are afraid of responsibility. And when this fear is removed, uh, uh, so that people should not be a hero with a sigh, people often say, uh, say oh, very sadly, yes, we are hero, heroes. But I think that uh, I wish to see heroes who are happy, who are glad to be heroes, because they get... Uh, uh, because they uh, get uh, a lot of pleasure from being responsible for things. And if we educate people in the spirit of responsibility for themselves and for the country in which we live, I'm totally sure uh, that we will become the greatest country within 10 years or less. Because the most important resource of a country is uh, the generation who, that follows me. And this is most important. Uh, thank you, Alexei. Thank you for having taken part uh, in this discussion. Thank you. And then we can go, and the rest can go somewhere towards uh, restaurants uh, and uh, continue our discussion. I'll go there right after the panel. And I would like uh, to uh, invite Alexei Vasiliev, uh, the director of uh, Gitmo, who has uh, uh, been uh, putting into practice the model of an entrepreneurship university. How, what's your place in this system? What accents you put, uh, or, or you put, uh, uh, what uh, are you doing? And uh, can, you, mm, can you give your opinion in the light of this discussion how this system should be, uh, should be constructed? I don't know how this system should be constructed. Uh, we talk a lot about education, about the system of higher education, and uh, I... Uh, and this, I will speak about things which I like. I will speak about uh, universities. Uh, uh, not, uh, I, I have listened to my colleagues from Taliati, from Ulyanovsk, from Moscow, from Tomsk, etc. Universities are the key word, and they uh, have one constant quality which unites us all. Neither colleges or teaching colleges or those elements of the system of education. Uh, the main uh, job of the universities is the production of people and production of knowledge, or generation of people and generation of uh, knowledge. And that's all. Then we can put a full stop. And universities, are, of course, are different. Uh, and we feel this difference with the first uh, words, um, Mesh, uh, concerning the mission of the universe and, or responsibility, the young lady who spoke this word uh, has left, perhaps. Uh, you know, I always use the English, very good English uh, word, integrity. It's not just responsibility, it's your inter interiorized uh, responsibility, plus responsibility proper. So this is um, determined by the values of the university, by the mission of the university, by the code of the university, which the university itself creates. And I would like to emphasize, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, one university is worse and the other is, another is better. No, they still have different, uh, they, they simply have different functions. Uh, as culture, as some... A uh, school leaver or an older person who enters the university chooses a university which uh, he or she likes. And within university, they also should uh, choose their tragic personal trajectories. And universities should give them the right to build their personal trajectories. And these are not just slogans. Uh, the better... A personal, the personal trajectory is uh, made, uh, the more different uh, uh, the result is. And uh, it is uh, the person who is responsible for the choice of his or her personal trajectory, not uh, the professor or the university. As regards entrepreneurship, uh, we haven't invited anything new. Our students, uh, our postgraduate students uh, who have come uh, in uh, 
uh, who have come in 2004, that is 14 years ago, said that it was necessary to develop uh, entrepreneurship, high-tech entrepreneurship. We ha worked on this for a long time. I sent uh, big team teams uh, naturally uh, to um, uh, to get uh, educated uh, in other countries. First to Finland, which was nearer, uh, then uh, to the Silicon Val Valley. And I will use the taboo word, the innovative system, innovators. Uh, we uh, saw how it was uh, to be built, how it was to localize. We understand that it's a very difficult uh, thing. We understand very well that an African palm will hardly prosper on the North Pole if we planted here uh, or if we replanted there. And my colleagues, both Finnish and American, helped us. They uh, provided grants. Uh, uh, our cooperation went on for years. All those start startup schools, uh, startup accelerators, uh, weekends, etc. Well, we have used all the tools uh, uh, that were available during our trips, uh, and we uh, did not uh, think that we were uh, producing. Entrepreneurs, we just gave an opportunity. We created uh, the environment. Uh, I think that uh, entrepreneurship culture is included in the code of our university, and of course, it includes uh, includes uh, the risk, presumption of failure, uh, etc. A university must not do business. I will. Uh, I will um, reveal a mystery. Uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, we created a business incubator in uh, 2016, a university business incubator. It was uh, the third in Europe uh, and uh, uh, fifth in the world uh, for two years. In uh, December 2017, I closed down. I will not uh, dis uh, explain why it's a, a different story, but we don't have a classical uh, business incubator. But... Uh, a modern, we understand that a modern university cannot be a closed system. Uh, we thought, uh, well, I have told uh, this uh, uh, four years ago, for three years and a half, uh, we uh, tried to put into practice uh, the idea of uh, uh, building a second campus which uh, would allow... Uh, which would allow to develop applied sciences, uh, uh, helping the uh, nearby businesses uh, for three years and a half. Uh, 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 we worked on this and we succeeded. Uh, and so we, it was a greenfield project. We are not Skolkova. Uh, the situation is a bit different. Uh, we have a seamless uh, uh, thing in the historical uh, center of our city. I do not leave uh, any building. Oh, you are so... Uh, and the building which is uh, uh, going on, uh, uh, already the uh, architectural tender has been proclaimed. Uh, well, it presupposes uh, building of a master's and postgraduate students uh, block, uh, uh, which is focused on uh, developing and putting into practice things. So 50% is a hotel and uh, uh, residential quarters for teachers, etc. 50%. Uh, and we have 40 hectares for uh, this campus. Uh, there are three uh, participants of the business uh, Around 32%, uh, I believe, uh, the uh, city government, I mean the St. Petersburg government, and the federal uh, government. So there are three participants, three players. Uh, and 50% uh, uh, are the companies. We have uh, started to choose them. It's not, it is not just companies who bring money. Uh, these are g companies who, who, that share your values. Uh, uh, you mentioned then an environment is created, a community, a single community is created, 
And it is not important whether uh, you whether you are a businessman or a teacher or a school cha- school uh, pupil or an old age pensioner. All uh, the, uh, this doesn't matter. And if we create such an environment, I'll be really very happy. Thank you. Thank you very much. But what is? Uh, but can you reveal this mystery? Why you? close down this business incubator. We have thought for quite a long time it is really a costly thing and I believe that perhaps it should be put out of the contour of the university. I believe that it should be an external thing. But now we have a Dutch advisor who is the head of of uh, the uh, Dutch ecosystem of universities from Utrecht, uh, and uh, the a business a business incubator must be part of a university because they should uh, because it motivates uh, students, it gives them confidence and makes them uh, ready to take risk. Yes, it must be placed within the ecosystem of a university, but it must not be within the university. Otherwise, we will go into the wrong direction. We will be just uh, making money. There should be no sellers in the temple. So, uh, our dear colleagues, we have gone through a full circle, and now we have still 10 or 12 minutes for questions from the audience. I'm Yelena Sirota. I am the director of or, and founder of a consulting group. Uh, I uh, work in the field of auditing and assessment from the business idea to the liquidation uh, of uh, an enterprise. And in 2009, when uh, uh, this estate program was launched, when employers were given uh, money in order to start uh, their own business, and I came to the employment center and said, uh, uh, "You should not just give money to people. You should, you must uh, teach something to them, train them." And my question is as follows: uh, Are there? You are the entrepreneur program, or for example, I am the a successful uh, entrepreneur program, which was put into practice in the Rostov. Region. I have seen a lot of uh, university students. We trained them to become entrepreneurs. And what I would like to tell you, dear rectors, the entrepreneurs, uh, uh, you know, university is a very an integral part of the system. It can it can develop. Uh, Develop. It can tr- teach the necessary qualities of entrepreneurs. Uh, students have no uh, uh, no uh, skills of public speaking, of communication, so they can be sought. So it is closer to soft skills. Uh, they are not uh, sure of themselves. Uh, uh, they uh, cannot uh, generate ideas. Uh, 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 a business uh, uh, generation of business ideas is, bet, is uh, better, s- more successful in the third form of a secondary school than in a, among university students. So please think about a combination in which you, university, teach uh, personal skills uh, of an entrepreneur and uh, uh, the. Uh, and uh, uh, the business uh, comes as teaches on uh, a permanent uh, uh, basis, not just co- co- not just once and forgotten. And start uh, from secondary schools, uh, and such a dialogue, such a panel is very effective when an entrepreneur speaks about his or her own experience, uh, how they have come into uh, the business. So thank you, thank you very much. Let's not abuse our time. Uh, so it would be very good if uh, participants of our panel uh, could uh, say oh, how and why they have come into business. They were not told to do so by the university. Here, I, Mikhail will react, but uh, we have uh, spoken about the uh, 
I, yeah, of Russia have uh, the works a lot in this field, uh, and uh, with the Association of Innovative Regions, we have uh, organized a competition on uh, technological entrepreneurship, which is very important here. Business partnership is very important. Mikhail wanted be uh, to speak. Uh, please be uh, quick. I have forgotten about such uh, structures, which help a lot. Uh, it was uh, made in the U.S. Uh, and they are called accelerators and sometimes incubators if they do not invest money. Usually they are called accelerators. And this experience must be uh, uh, studied. Uh, why Combinator than the 500 startups in uh, San Francisco, in New York, is but the works program. You can find such programs, uh, very con concise programs for three months, so you don't need uh, higher education. We had even a Finnish startup sooner. Uh, but yes, of course, uh, these are little things. Uh, my name is Ina Radchenko uh, from the International Integration Club. Uh, I have looked at what our esteemed uh, uh, entrepreneurs are doing, uh, restaurant owners, uh, pharmaceuticals uh, uh, producers, uh, food producers. I'm very glad for you. Uh, these are the niches where the hairy paw of the state monopolism has not uh, reached. Uh, just look at the banking sphere. Seventy percent are state banks. Look at the building uh, sector, at the insurance business, assessment business, uh, Auditing business, all is going, uh, all all is go is being destroyed. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, there was a survey among school children uh, about uh, the most popular professions has been conducted. And the most school children wanted to become functionaries or military officers. Uh, I think we should save in some way. Uh, things from a state monopoly. Otherwise, we will have uh, a glamorous version of uh, the Soviet Union. Well, it's not a question. Uh, it's uh, a problem of the economy on the one hand. Uh, well, the economy has grown. Not in this... Uh, e uh, mostly on redistribution. And then on... Uh, making things uh, harder to do. Well, and uh, we looked at uh, people who created something from scratch, but normally uh, the economy is, uh, is, the, is created by uh, our ancestors, and uh, people often uh, say uh, that, uh, uh, that it is not uh, fair. Well, I believe that uh, a new owner if he, if he, when he overtakes uh, some old uh, enterprise, uh, added some new elements uh, uh, from his soul, but in fact there are niches where the state uh, can can be the owner to a very large extent. Uh, there are sectors uh, where it can be present. Uh, and we should focus more on effective management because uh, we have uh, strange, uh, uh, strange examples of uh, effective uh, of, of effectiveness and efficiency in uh, state uh, or public enterprises are explained by the personal qualities, by the uh, recklessness and heroism of uh, their. Uh, of their directors, their leaders, and there is not a single successful example of uh, the state capitalism uh, uh, having made uh, this state, uh, the, the economy of the state uh, competitive. Uh, so the business community, business association, yes, it can do, it can, for example, create uh, one effective industry, for example, like Norwegian gas. But uh, a full-blown state uh, capitalism in your economy, well, uh, are there any examples? Uh, well, perhaps someone uh, thinks differently. I believe uh, that uh, the state should be there where you cannot do without it. And there where you can do without it, like in Singapore, the Yellow Book, if there are two uh, private companies, there should be no, uh, no state company. 
So there should be certain fairness in adjusting the system. For example, if Vadim wants to live uh, on credit in any uh, in any bank, uh, everybody uh, will calculate the risk of Vadim having failed uh, to grow a cucumber or feed his uh, uh, his. Uh, cow with the right grass, he will become a bankrupt. When a state company, state-owned company, uh, lends, uh, borrows, sorry, borrows money, everybody thinks that even if, uh, fa if it fails, uh, the state will pay for it. So the degree of risk is different. So as a first uh, uh, the step, uh, the risks uh, should be leveled uh, for us and for the state. And second, uh, we should... Uh, well, of course, in certain sectors, specific se sectors like Ross Atom, uh, uh, the state can do uh, a lot. Uh, and the, then, uh, may, uh, so the, then Ross Atom should not uh, produce uh, mousetraps and uh, cheese, so that uh, uh, so that. Uh, uh, so that uh, it will allow some space for entrepreneurs. Well, colleagues, I think we should already uh, wrap up our proceedings. Yes, Alexei uh, uh, speaks uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, policy, but your question is in different logic. And if we talk about entrepreneurship, it's the logic of looking for opportunity in limited uh, in limited uh, resources. Yes, we all compete like universities. For example, our, uh, our have, for example, five, uh, we, for example, have five to six million uh, uh, of uh, funding. Another university has 50 to 60 million. Others, uh, another, still another 150 million. But we have uh, caught up with uh, a number of such universities, uh, uh, respectively of uh, what uh, we have, uh, uh, irrespective of uh, having uh, f uh, far less uh, resources. So it is not, we should uh, uh, achieve what we can uh, within uh, the um, within uh, the existing opportunities, opportunity uh, limits uh, and not uh, complain that uh, 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 the, the is half empty. I just think that uh, there is nothing better and more practical than a good theory which may be used in practice in that sense, our discussion about the values which we use without noticing that was clearly very good. Um, a lady from the room asked a question about how we develop the civilization, how the values may be extrapolated on that. And in the room, I think uh, we were very much surprised that religion may influence business process. But in essence, if we think about that, what uh, actually changed the civilization, whether it was Christianity which changed uh, the civilization or certain theories. The evening lecture will uh, start in 15 minutes now. And I see a paradox among the participants in this uh, discussion. Alexander said that you have to be born an entrepreneur, but at the same time, he personally uh, graduated from executive MBA program and many panelists on purpose either opted for MBA program or for anything else. But what did you find in this program which would create some values for you and uh, what you would change in that programs now? Who would answer this question? I actually, my course answer would be very simple. We discussed about something different here. Business education, I think. Uh, this is an applied um, science when you are already an entrepreneur and you just have to get fundamental, technical, mechanical and other types of knowledge just to get an experience uh, for which you just do not have time to learn on your own. You just take it from the world experience and you apply that uh, at the level you have grown up to. And getting back to the main objective of the university is to uh, create those sophisticated people through creating individuals or personalities. And the last question, probably. Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Uh, can you introduce yourself? My name is Mosef Oleg. I am an MA student of uh, Ranepa. I used to be an entrepreneur. I have the following question. Look. When we had six years were developing entrepreneurship, it used to be called speculation and people were criminally punished for that. And I stand up for the fact that now we may be entrepreneurs. But the situation looks as follows. When people reach certain level or a certain volume of uh, turnover, their business is very interesting either for certain companies or people who are close to the Russian authorities. Well, Vladimir Mao uh, said very good words. Well, actually, I was not allowed to that room. I'm pleased to see that we have a lot of reactors who started the business from scratch and uh, people listed their businesses and they managed to come up with a good company, big company. Don't you have a fear that... Uh, you may just lose your business uh, the same way as many people lost when uh, someone is interested in uh, snatching your business. And this is my first question. And secondly, I do think that we have to develop the private property institute to that. Who take that question? I may take that question. I do think that uh, business is done in many countries of the world by different entrepreneurs with different share stakes. With different risk appetite, you may do business in Somalia, in Nigeria, with some local prince working, and this is up to you where you are doing business. For us, actually, we have to discuss what is so valuable for us now. For us, valuable to be needed by you, or to the society, or to be needed by the country, to bring some benefit, uh, however pathetic it may sound. But on the other hand, you may just remember that... Uh, 50 or 100 years ago, slavery was cancelled, uh, was abolished in the United States. So it means, so it means that the civilization is changing for the better. Your objective and the objective of the university is to bring about smart people who would create sustainable systems that allow the society for. Uh, to develop, to evolve in the long run, to be uh, diverse, to be different. If you want to choose uh, for entrepreneurship, that's up to you. Then uh, the army is among well, most favorite professions. Uh, 20 years ago, people didn't opt to be an officer, to be a serviceman, so the country is changing. Actually, you have to set accents, uh, to fo set focuses the right way. Private property, this is something unshakable for me. This uh, goes without saying, but uh, probably for 50% of people, this is something they have not decided yet. This is the question to science, whether it is important for the country to have private property or not. Or um, security of the shelter. The lawyers have to take that question. Is it uh, so relevant or not? So let us raise this question or not. In mathematics, in chemistry, we have other questions. And they proceed from our life values. Dear colleagues, um, completing our discussion, do you think that this is the two-way street? On the one hand, this is a question of politics. And uh, Dilubaira Sio Business Russia uh, has to help us how to put, make focuses, to put focuses there. But at the, on the other hand, we have to do everything possible to have as many people who are ready to assume responsibility as possible. And uh, let me make certain conclusions. We have such a paradoxical conclusion that uh, we're not speaking about technologies, we're not speaking about uh, manipulations, what uh, entrepreneurs may do, raise on the competences, but this is a uh, uh, private choice, individual choice. This is when you actually adore your business, you're ready to risk your life, risk your um, welfare, and you make your choice every year. This is a mature life philosophy which you develop. But at the same time, universities have to build certain uh, medium, certain environment, and it has to be multi-step. First level, first step, this is about motivation. This is the environment where we bring up uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship when every person may try this role of entrepreneur. When you 
actually meet an outstanding person and uh, be able to say that I want to live like that. Second level uh, is for those who really want to become entrepreneurs. And for them, we have to create certain programs, a certain environment, uh, and the training for them should be different. Not just tell them about entrepreneurship as uh, you tell a person from the standpoint of a person who saw how it might be done and who saw the person who saw how it might be done. So there should be some real cases. And then business should bring certain um, real examples to the uh, university, invest into those cases, uh, spend its time there in the university and structure the experience so that we could replicate this university. We have thousands of universities, this is an enormous resource. Moreover, we can create uh, infrastructure. So let us get back to that um, question. Rolsen from the Netherlands um, uh, said that uh, the choice of incubator is uh, pivotal for uh, training the students. Um, and without that, uh, it would be way a route to nowhere. And finally, once we have a global uh, entrepreneurship uh, infrastructure, we can uh, speak about venture investments. This is a pool of people who would need talented, uh, smart, uh, young people, the ideas uh, uh, generated by the universities. And for that, we have to allow the entrepreneurs um, to participate in certain um, uh, steering committees. Um, they have to be part of the evaluation process in universities. And this transformation is quite clearly very painful for the universities too. Let me spend some time for advertisement. Seriously speaking, we are implementing an umbrella project in Russia, which is called Russia is a country of opportunity. Of opportunities. This is not just uh, actually one of the uh, top projects implemented in Russia, but uh, this is clearly one of really most outstanding ones. And in Sochi, the finals um, would be held, and the last semi-final was held in Moscow. Now, this is uh, running uh, the Russian Federation, the World Skills Contest, etc. This project is designed both for students, for young people, for the youth. Just uh, uh, Google Russia, the country of opportunities, and uh, probably you will enjoy it. And we will address certain fundamental challenges. Not those who are ready to join uh, the entrepreneurship ranks, but also those who yet uh, study in the university. It uh, be unfair to the best uh, social uh, lifts uh, project uh, not to mention it now. Dear colleagues. Thank you so much. I would like to wish all of us to see opportunities in that story. Despite all the difficulties which we have, we have a lot of resources uh, in business and uh, in the system of education. And this very first conversation certainly was quite sophisticated. We only try to find common ground, uh, common turf uh, for business and for the educational system. But together, we probably can write the new history which would dramatically change the situation. Once we have uh, this class of people who are ready to assume responsibility, ready to do something courageous, just like our panelists who are present here. Let me thank everyone for a nice discussion, for joining our conversation. Thank you so much. I wish every success to everyone present in these rooms. And see you again. Thank you so much.